To begin, in the words of Tony Abbott, modern Australia has an Aboriginal heritage, a British foundation, and a multicultural character. And it is the interweaving of these three great traditions that have built an equally great nation. The modern Australia is exceptionally prosperous, but also exceptionally diverse, with nearly one third of Australians being born overseas. Today, I'll be discussing the involvement of immigrants in huge nation building projects, investigating high migrant suburbs like Springvale, as well as analyzing the impacts of migrants on the social, cultural, and political aspects of Australian life. Menzies recognized the value of immigration. Even before the end of the Second World War, the Australian government was already planning to reconstruct Australia by bringing in around 70,000 migrants a year. The Department of Immigration, which was only established in 1944, settled migrants to both rural and developing communities, supporting their economic growth. In the following 20 years of the war, there was an estimated 2 million new Australians, transforming Australia from an overwhelmingly British society to a multicultural nation, according to David Lowe. A few months ago now, on the Robert Mendes Institute's Afternoon Light podcast, historian Peter Brune found that among immigrants, there was a perception of an egalitarian Australia, with a nation that was highly socially mobile, with hard work being rewarded by great success. Australia's proud egalitarian heritage has been a huge pull factor for immigrants across the world and is emblematic of all of the values that Australia strives for. A joint project last year by the University of Melbourne and several other Australian universities displayed just how immigrants have bolstered the Australian economy. An example of hard-working Australian industry is the famous Port Kembla Steelworks. By 1956, post-war migrants made up 41% of the more than 22,000 employees at the Port Kembla Steelworks. This helped to drive Australia's proud working class prosperity, and it is still the largest industrial facility in Australia, producing around 3 million tonnes of steel per annum, generating $6.5 billion for the economy. Additionally, the famous Snowy Hydro project, a megalithic network of 16 dams and more than 12 mountain tunnels, was also thanks in large part to immigrants. Of the 100,000 workers on the project, around 60,000 were recent immigrants to Australia, most of these being non-Anglophones who became central to the Australian industrial transformation. A large proportion of the construction was done by immigrant firms. In fact, it was Dutch and Italian firms who built much of the snowy hydro buildings, including the offices, cottages, and hostels. The Snowy Hydro Scheme, a signature Menzian initiative, helped reform Australia's infrastructure and was in large part a success thanks to immigrants' contributions and their businesses, helping to drive Australia's proud working class prosperity. However, if you are to look for this prosperity that migration has brought to Australia, you don't have to travel to the mountains or to steelworks by the sea. Instead, if you are looking at more recent wave of migrants, all that you have to do to see Australia's immigration success is to look to many of Australia and Melbourne's suburbs. Take, for example, Springvale. Since the Second World War, Springvale has been home to many new Australians, being the home of Yugoslavs, Algerians, Turkish, Argentinians, Timorese, and eventually, and most famously, the Vietnamese. As of 2024, less than 30% of Springvale residents were actually born in Australia, whilst only 7% record their ancestry as Australian. But these fears of immigrants swallowing up too many state resources, especially in the 1990s, have been assuaged, in large part due to immigrants' intense dedication to enterprise and industriousness, with pressures on urban infrastructure being accounted for by booms in housing and constructions, whilst many new small businesses are frequently initiated by immigrants. History paints a clear picture. With each new wave of migration that comes to Australia, so too does a wave of economic growth, innovation and renewal. However, to take a holistic view of development, you must look beyond economics, facts and figures. A huge part of development is a change in cultural, social and political atmosphere of Australia. 
I challenge you to imagine the Australian food scene without the incredible additions of pizzas, barn meat, dumplings, tikka masalas, kebabs, or the HSP. Many of the foods that we love simply wouldn't be available if it wasn't for the impact of immigrants and post-war migration. Politics-wise, the electorate which I live in, Chisholm, in 2019 had both major parties submit Chinese-Australian candidates. And in my local council, Monash, earlier this year, we elected our first Chinese-Australian mayor and have recently just elected our first Korean person to council. Even today, the stated, the stated intent of the Department of Immigration remains dedicated to building Australia's future through the entry and resettlement of people. In some ways, I personally am a representation of how migrants have gelled with Australian culture. My maternal grandparents both worked with the South Vietnamese government during the Vietnam War. My grandfather in the intelligence section of the Ministry of Defense, and my grandmother as a translator at the US Embassy in Saigon. My family, as an aside, is personally in debt to Menzies because my grandfather was only able to come to Australia because he was awarded a Colombo Plan scholarship to study education at, the Mon at Monash University. My grandfather, after completing his scholarly studies, started the subject of VCE Vietnamese and wrote the textbooks for it, whilst my grandmother translated school newsletters for parents who couldn't speak English, whilst then earning her own education degree. When my mum started dating my Irish-Australian dad, who's here today, it opened my paternal grandparents to a whole new world. My grandparents, who owned a metalworking shop in Camberwell, had never really encountered Asian cultures before. But they connected over food. My paternal grandparents got their first try of Vietnamese cuisine, which was then expanded to a myriad of Asian cultures. Now, hardly 20 years after my parents met, my grandma now spends every Tuesday in her local community center with her Chinese friends playing mahjong. This anecdote neatly articulates Australia's immigration narrative. Immigra immigrants come over seeking a better life and in doing so, they improve the lives of Australians who are already here, bringing to them new experiences, foods, ideas, and ways of connecting. Whilst 20 years ago, my grandmother would have only known sweet and sour pork, she's now regularly ordering biryani for takeover. As I've demonstrated, Australia has benefited massively from the contribution of immigrants. From economics, building our industrial heritage, building huge infrastructure projects, to building small but important suburbs within Melbourne and across the country, but then also our political, social and cultural development, which is just as crucial and just as important. And so I believe with Australia's proud immigrant culture that we can say that we can all advance Australia fair. Thank you.